All right, guys, we're going to talk today about uh, gene encoding. We're going to look at relative coordinates instead of absolute. We did absolute on the last video. And so we're going to look at how coding changes when you're using the relative coordinate system instead of the absolute coordinate system. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is how does that change our planning? So we talked about last time that the planning we do, we're going to list out all of these vertices that we are going to try to uh, map into our uh, cut that we're going to make. And so before we would start by uh, just putting down the actual coordinates for each of those points. So you go and you'd look on the grid and figure out where A, B, C, D, E, and F, and all those different coordinates are going to be. When we do this incremental or relative coordinate system, uh, we're going to do it a little differently. So everything we're doing is based off of uh, where we are currently and how do we get from where we are to the next position. So it's a relative positioning system, just like we saw when we were doing uh, RoboCell and we were uh, doing the relative coordinate system there, that the position you were programming in was not actually uh, a specific absolute coordinate in space, but it was just kind of how do you get from where you are now to this new location? That's what's going to happen here as well. So uh, what we want to look at is how do we get from the starting point to each next coordinate? And so A is going to be kind of our starting point here. And, and so we have the origin mark, but we're not really measuring from the origin except for point A. Point A is the only absolute coordinate we're going to be looking at. Everything else after that is going to be relative to the coordinate we're at currently. And so we'll start at A and we'll go from A to B and then B to C and then D and then E. But all of our motions are going to be, how do we get from where we are now to where we want to go next? So that means to get from A to B, I need to think about what motion do I need to make to get from A to B. So to get from A to B, I'm moving all the way here in the Y direction. My X coordinate has not changed. Uh, if we looked at B's actual coordinate, it'd be at 0.5, 1.5. So because A is not uh, different in the X direction, our X coordinate for B, when we do this incrementally or, or relative coordinates, is going to be zero. We're not changing the X coordinate at all. We're, we're keeping the X coordinate constant, but we are changing Y, and we're changing Y by one unit. So we're going up one unit in the Y direction. So our Y coordinate for B is positive one. And then same thing for C. C is relative to B, so you got to keep track of where you are and figure out how you're going to get from there to the next position. So to get from B to C, we would be going uh, down and over. So we're going to go over to the right, so it's going to go over uh, 0.375 units in the X direction, and we're going down a half unit in the, the Y. So those are our coordinates, 0.375, negative 0.5. And then same for D and E and all the way through, everything is going to be relative to the coordinate we're looking at. Uh, one thing to look at for I, I is being given relative to H. So we'll talk about that more when we look at our code, but they're giving that uh, center point coordinate relative to H. And that is where we would be at. So again, we have to kind of understand where we are in the course of our program. So we're assuming that we'd be sitting at point H when we are getting ready to do that arc. And so to do that arc, then we need to refer to our center point by its uh, relative distance or its relative coordinates from point H. And so that's why it's uh, zero in the X, because we didn't move left or right at all, but we went up a half unit from H to get to I. All right, so let's take a look at what the coordinates uh, look like when we start actually writing code. All right, so here's kind of our, our sample program for this, and we're just going to go through line by line and just do a quick talk about what, what's happening here. Uh, you'll notice our very first line is just like we did with the absolute coordinates. We're going to start off by putting in G90 and G20. Uh, again, the G90 says we're doing absolute coordinates, and G20 says we're using inches as our, our units, not, not millimeters. Uh, and we're going to start G90 for absolute pretty much every time um, because we do need to establish a starting point. And so we need to at least start with something that we know where we are. And then later on, we'll switch from absolute to, to incremental or to the, the relative coordinates. And then line two, just like on our last code, we are going to do a tool change. We want to put in tool one. And again, we're not going to worry about now what tool one is, but uh, tool one should be an eighth inch uh, end mill. But we just need to specify what tool we're using because it needs to know which tool out of the, the tool library we have are we using. So. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter too much that it is that eighth inch for us necessarily, but it does matter that we have specified what tool we're using. And then we're going to turn on our spindle, give our set our spindle speed. Again, all these things are exactly the same as the absolute one. Everything's going to be the same all the way down through line five. So we're going to move to our uh, first starting point, which is basically uh, point A. We're not at point A, but we're above it. Uh, just a reminder, and we won't get to see this, but uh, when you do that tool change, it will actually move up to a safe height above the part so that you can actually make that tool change. And it will stay there until you move it again. So when we tell it to go to X.5, Y.5, it's going to keep the same Z height that it has because we didn't tell it a Z height to move to. So it's going to move from that safe height over to basically above this location. So that's what we're doing first. We're going to move to this 0 .5, 0 0.5 location. Again, this is an absolute coordinate. This is where uh, A is relative to the origin. And then we're also going to move down to 0.1 in our Z. So these two motions are just getting us ready. They're getting us to our starting point. And again, we, this is the last time that we will have a fixed absolute coordinate that we know where we are. Everything after this is going to be relative to the position we're at. So think of it as like doing a, a, a map and you're just giving directions. So we have one spot that we know we're starting from. We're starting from home or from you know, wherever you're, you would start from, like if you're doing a Google map. And then from here on out, it's going to be just telling us, you know, what's the next turn? What's the next direction we need to go? All right, so we get to the line six. And line six here is where we first do something different. And so we're going to change from absolute to incremental mode or, or relative mode. So G91 is that code. And so now what it's telling us is everything we do after this point, so all these things down here, because we've now switched that mode, none of these are absolute coordinates anymore. Everything we're doing here is relative to where we are. And that's easy to forget. And so you gotta have to just keep that in mind as we go, that everything we're putting in here is relative to our previous position. And so we look at line seven. Uh, if we think back to what we did before, uh, we did a down, downward motion to cut into the material. And we wanted to cut a 16th of an inch deep into the material. We didn't want to go real deep. Uh, here, because we're doing it relative, since we're at point one currently, that's where we were at the end of line five. We're at point five, point five, point one as our X, Y, and Z coordinates. I need to move down from that position. So I need to go down 0.1 to get to zero plus an additional 16th of an inch, so 0 0.0625 to get down to the depth I really want to be at. So here our Z motion is going to be to negative 0.1625. So we're moving down the distance to get to zero plus the depth we want to cut at. And that's different than what we did before with absolute because absolute we just need to tell it what depth we wanted to be at. Here we're telling it how far do I need to move to get to the depth I want to be at. So it's it's the depth we want to be at plus the height we were above before. And again, just like before, we do need to uh, specify our feed rate. So when you say, you know, F is at nine to set our feed rate at nine inches per minute. And again, that's half of our normal cutting speed. Uh, there's a little typo in here. I'm not sure why that is, but this should be F18 in this next line. All right, so what's happened here? Well, when we get to the end of line seven, we are at point one or point A, our, our starting point in our cut. So now everything we're doing from here is going to be just cutting out our first letter, which is that M. And so we said, you know, to get to point B, we went um, zero on the X because we didn't want to change our X coordinate. We just want to go straight up and we want to go up one unit in the Y direction. So there's our Y is one. This really should be F18. I'm not sure why they put 16. I'm sure it's just a typo. But that would get us to point B. And then we go for point B. We say, okay, from there, I needed to go over 0.375 and down 0.5 to get back down to point C, which is the middle of the M, and then back up to D, and then down to E. So we're just tracing out the letters, but each move we're making is how far do I need to move from where I am now to get to where I need to be to get to the next location. So we're not putting in, again, we're not putting in actual coordinates. We're just putting in the change in x, the change in y, to get from where we are now to where we want to go next. All right, the most common mistake people make uh, is really with the heights. And so we're going to see here, uh, I want to get back up to that safe height. And so I need to go back up 0.1625. And so that would get me back to a height of 0.1. 
we went down um, 0.1625. We're going to go back up 0.1625 to get to that same height. And it seems pretty simple, and it is pretty simple, but for whatever reason, uh, people are pretty good about remembering the x, y coordinates are different, but we tend to forget the z. And so we'll put uh, 0.1 in there like we did on the absolute. And so we move up 0.1, which does move us up, but it's not going to move us up all the way back to our normal safe position. And so then when I come over here, if I put this negative 0.1625, I'm actually going to cut deeper. And that's a pretty common problem. Usually you, you'll notice it pretty quickly when you see somebody cutting their parts because it's going to be like every letter that cuts a little bit deeper than the previous one. That's usually the, the way you can tell when somebody's messed that up. Uh, and it happens to everybody. It's happened to me too. So, uh, so we're going to move up to our safe position, move to our new starting point for our second letter. So here we're moving to point F, which is at the top of the D. And so we're going to move over to there, come back down into our material. And so we're coming back in uh, and again, we're going back down the same distance we went up because we want to go back to that same depth we were cutting at. Oops. And then uh, at our feed rate of nine. And then we'll come down and start our next cut. So this is where we're going to go down to point H. And then we get to our um, arc. And so for the arc, again, just like before, uh, we need to put in our ending point. And so in this case, our ending point is back up at point F. So we're back up in one unit in the Y, zero from in, in the X. And then you need to put in your center point. So here we have our center point at zero and then point five. That is that point I that we had. So I was one, like half the way up to between the um, F and H. And so it was a half unit up from point H. You can also use the radius thing here as well. And if you're using the NC viewer that I put into the absolute coordinates um, assignment, that one, uh, you're going to need to probably use the radius. You can try it this way. I haven't tried it yet to see if it handles this better. But with the absolute coordinates, it did not handle the IJ thing very well. I think it will handle the relative correctly because I... I think when I was messing with it, I think it did do that one correctly. So you may be okay using the IJ, uh, but just be aware you may need to use the radius instead uh, of the IJ coordinate system. Okay. All right. And then, so once you finish that, we've finished our, our D. You know, we've made the down cut and we made the arc. And so then we're going to come out of the material, turn off the spindle. This part is important. Um, you can do it either way, but you need to be consistent with them. I mean, you need to think about what you're doing because you can either put it back to absolute and then just use the absolute coordinates like we did last time, or you can um, keep it in relative. But if you keep it in relative, you're going to have to really think about, you know, well, where am I now and how far do I need to move up to get to these locations? So it's probably easier to go ahead and switch back to absolute before you go to your safe location, just so that you don't have to worry about, you know, figuring out, okay, well, from where I am now, how far up do I need to go? How far left and right do I need to go? Uh, but we're just going to move uh, back to our safe location. So we're getting to a safe height above the part. So we're moving two inches above the part. And then we're just moving the spindle uh, four units in the X, three units in the Y, just to get it out of the way. Uh, so that when we stop our program, we end the program, we're ready to take our part out. Uh, we don't have that uh, mill bit just sitting right there by our hand, you know, where we're going to potentially hit our hand against it because they are pretty sharp. You don't want to accidentally nick yourself on that. All right. So that'd be our, our uh, code then. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, do the same thing we do at the absolute. You're going to just change your code a little bit. You can use the same letters when you do your assignment, but uh, try rewriting your code with absolute and, or with relative instead of the absolute coordinates and just make sure that, you know, this works for you and you understand how it works. All right, that's the end of this video. We'll uh, move on and do some more new stuff next time. Thank you.